Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pastrami Nation, the meat of pop culture. We have a special interview with you, for you today. My name is Nolan Smith. I am the editor and co-founder of Pastrami Nation. Joining me today is reporter and reviewer Kevin Hoskinson. Hello, Kevin. Hey, man, what's up? Oh, and I have to thank Kevin for arranging this awesome interview. We get to talk to two people that are part of this really great movie called Last Call. So I'd like to welcome filmmaker Gavin Michael Booth and actor David Wilkins. Hello, hello, hello hey guys. Hello. <laughs> Having us. Oh, yes, thank, thank you for you. being Pastr on. Pastrami is the best, and Pastrami Nation is even <laughs> better. Oh, you heard it right from the man there, see? <laughs> All right, so I, I want to jump to Gavin and ask Gavin, first, can you just tell us about this movie, about Last Call? Sure. It's uh, an incredibly simple story of a man that's played by David Wilkins named Scott, who calls, uh, attempts to call a suicide hotline. Um, you know, contemplating ending his life and uh, because of a simple misdial of one digit ends up connected with a random stranger uh, where the movie gets overly complicated is that uh, David and I decided to shoot the movie in a true single take. So no edits in the entire film. And the film was also presented in split screen. So you're actually watching both sides of these characters lives throughout the duration of the entire movie. So two camera crews rolling simultaneously in different areas with the actors, David and our, our lead actress, Sarah, acting over a live telephone call to all together in one take to make the movie that you are able to now see. Wow. That, Very that's cool. pretty awesome. That's true. Everything he just said was accurate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so can you just tell us a little bit about the, um, the evolution of the project? Um, how did you guys, um, I know you guys co-wrote it together, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so what was the evolution like, um, you know, what, who had the kind of the seed of the idea and then how did it just kind of come about? Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, the, the seed started here, um, but uh, Gavin and I had met, oh, what was it, a year and a half, I think, before this? Roughly, yeah. Something like that. Um, and so we, we had sort of like shared our love for different types of films, but particular particularly long takes and, uh, you know, sort of those auteur directors like Hitchcock and, yeah. you know, Spielberg likes his long, his long running takes. And uh, Gavin cast me in this music video for the very talented uh, band, Us the Duo. Um, mm -hmm. It was a Christmas video that we shot and it was all done uh, in one take with lots of Lots of people moving in and out and changing backgrounds, and it wasn't the it wasn't Gavin's first foray into a, a single take film. And I I remembered he had been t talking to me about a feature that he had written and optioned, and then fill out option, then re optioned, and the you know the classic one, the classic. One, it's, thing. One of, it's one of those on the shelf that we'll never see. The oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the super <laughs> thick one. Cause, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I had. I had this idea after talking to a friend of mine who was volunteering for the crisis prevention hotline um, about, because that just struck me like that, that is the most basic of human connection. Because um, you've got a stranger and you've got a person that doesn't want to be a part of the world anymore. And they're brought together to talk, you know, and the, and the hope is that, you know, the, the stranger can encourage this other person to stick it out a little bit longer. And, uh, you know, it just struck me as such an, an important part of our humanity and an important story. Um, and I, had, you know, I'd been seeing in the news just the uh, absolute epidemic levels that suicide had started to reach uh, among so many different age groups and demographics. It's, you know, it's truly like it doesn't, care how old you are or what your race is or where you live you know it's just it's kind of a it's a it's a haunting demon and uh and so you know i i had the next day where i met up with gavin at this uh, this thing we used to do called positive coffee talk and it was it was uh, the one time during the week that i knew that i could get some coffee and everybody had to talk about the good things that were going on uh, and that was the reason I had started it. And that we just kind of, you know, we ran that for a while until somebody started coming and just couldn't buy into the positive part of the coffee talk. So then we just moved it. Now it's positive coffee walk and we just, we walk around so that they don't know where we are. 
but um, <laughs> it's terrible. It sounds, it sounds like a, it sounds like a joke, but it's uh, it's, yeah, it's really accurate. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so at that, I I looked over again. I was like, hey, I have this idea about a feature film about a guy who calls into a suicide hotline, and it's all shot in a single take, and you see both of them at the same time. What do you think? And Gavin was like, it was just like we we talk about it like the chairs and everyone else just kind of like separated and like we like came together like some sort of a Cameron Crow movie like early <laughs> Cameron Crow, you know and just uh basically outlined at least half of the film just sitting there talking back and forth um and that so that was the that was the seed that that's what got planted and then roots started to grow very cool um so there wasn't, it was always kind of the idea to do it one shot um, split screen or was there any conversation about doing it like a traditional narrative at all? Or was that kind of the only way you guys have always yeah, you know, I, envisioned I think, it? I th yeah, I think that if, if you're talking about asking people to watch an 80 minute phone call, like, you know, you're gonna need yeah. to have something visually compelling. Um, and what we found- I, well, I don't Or, think or a better just, director. <laughs> yeah that's true but we couldn't find one and so <laughs> um what i think what, what was interesting is what what we found most compelling is that doing it in that fashion not only did it keep everything visually um moving at all times but it gave the audience this uh almost omniscient voyeuristic look at these two people because you can pick and choose who you're watching. There's no, right. you don't, you're not at the mercy of, of what ended up in the final take, like what got edited together. Like you can watch every movement, every reaction, every pause, every hesitation, every stutter, every line that gets uttered from either character. That was, and that was my thing. I said, you know, I've, as David mentioned, I've, I've done, a good dozen or so single take music videos. I've done a 20 minute single take short. It was actually with the same cinematographer, Seth, that we shot this movie with. And uh, I had even had a chance to do the world's first live movie. It was actually broadcast live. So that was just a single take by nature. Wow. And, um, you know, when he came with this idea, I mean, we could, we could have hidden cuts in this movie easily. It would definitely would have made the production <laughs> easier if we decided to do that. But I said, like, if we're going to do it, let's try to go for broke and actually figure out. We also could have shot one side of it and then, you know, match the other side to that. But I just said, if we're gonna do it, let's try to do it authentically. And exactly what David's saying is you're, you're sort of, that's the route to give the viewer like an unflinching look at um, the character of Beth's reaction on the phone call. What did change yeah. and evolve from that original coffee meeting is that it's not a suicide hotline he's calling, but you know, that the idea of him calling a, a random stranger, we the parameters of what actually happens when you call a mental health line or a suicide hotline, um, there, there's, there's like a ticking clock and a time limit on that phone call where you essentially either agree to be safe and the call ends or they send you know, the, the police or, or civil servants to, be, to do a wellness check on you. Uh, so we were trying to like, we wanted to make a movie. We're gonna, if we we're gonna tackle mental health, we wanted to be authentic with it. We didn't wanna make it a mm -hmm. gimmick. It couldn't just be a plot point. That was right. that we were both adamant about that. And we we're having to come up with like, what if it's a snowstorm and no one else can get into the to the call center that that night? And eventually it was just like, uh, it doesn't work. It was kind of like there's a couple of days of just pause of like, well, that was a cool idea. Maybe we just don't do it. And right. then the idea <laughs> came up to what if it's a random stranger? And then it, it it freed us of all of those parameters. And that's when the movie and the writing got really interesting because then it could be anyone who's on the other side of the phone. And we just thought then that connects the viewer, the audience a little better because they're like the random stranger that doesn't know exactly what they say or how they would handle every moment and you know every every pause, every hesitation, every question they ask the person. Literally, somebody's life is on the line. So uh, doing it in a single take allows you to sort of uh, live and breathe and, and feel all the same tension that the character of Beth has in in this situation. Oh. oh no there he is yeah. he's a sorry about that box. guys yeah. sorry he was like well that's the worst i've ever heard and, <laughs> and, yeah. no. that's what he does kevin just no, pops out he, like no but listen has anybody has anybody, has anybody watched host on shutter the 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 zoom yes. 
because now every time somebody yes, disappears yeah. from the chat and it's their name, I expect it to come back with like a raging <laughs> demon face and like I fall over in my chair. Oh man. <laughs> God, that, that movie like terrified me, man. It was one of the first movies I've seen in a long time that it's it's great. Incredible what they did. Yeah, I love and that what, movie. Again, what's, um, what's, what's amazing? Yeah, go ahead. I, I won't review hosts anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Other movies. Hey, I don't mind There's... talking about other movies. That's that's actually how me and you got started talking. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I was just going to say that with hosts, it's it, it's terrifying, but it's it's a movie that like, to me, it was the skin of Unfriended and all of the best scares of Paranormal Activity 1, 2, and 3 yeah. just recycled, oh. but they did it in such a fresh and fun way that that didn't bother me. And like they, that, that movie holds tension. You know, I, I'm sure there's cuts in it, but it's technically like a, a one take uh, feel where it just, you know, you never break oh, from that call. Yeah. And yeah, super fun. Loved it. Well, let, let yeah, me segue us back movie, into yeah. talking about our movie <laughs> by mentioning that uh, the friend of mine that works, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a friend of mine that was volunteering for the uh, the crisis prevention hotline is Katie Featherston from the Paranormal Activity franchise. Yeah. So that was, she oh, was really? the inspiration for all of this. Oh, wow. Wow, that's that's awesome. I didn't know that she was involved with the crisis hotline and stuff. You yeah. didn't read yeah, our special was, thanks credit? Man, Kevin, I really thought you loved the movie. I did, I did, I loved it, and and I, I absolutely loved it. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, I should have paid more attention. <laughs> You're supposed to IMDb um, every single one of those special thanks, so you fully understand that. <laughs> right. But no, that's that's really incredible to hear. That's that's awesome. And your movie, speaking of like high tension kind of horror movies, um, this movie, like the last, without giving anything away. The last five minutes is just incredibly gut wrenching, like tension filled, like anxiety. Like I was watching it. I don't think I've, I, I haven't seen a movie in a long time, like a drama, especially where I just was kind of like, what is going on? <laughs> um, and it just played out so well. And I just, um, it was, I mean, you guys did amazing with that. You know, throughout the whole movie, there's this, this tension, you know, like her with, you know, her son not coming home yet and then building it up to, you know, with the phone call. And then, so you have those two points kind of coming together at the end and you're just like, it blew me away. So you guys it, did an amazing job on that. You know, it's definitely a huge chunk of credit for that finale and, and yeah. the build up to the end is, is our composer, Adrian Ellis, uh, you know, his music score. Yes. I, I've worked with Adrian several times and he was always going to be the composer of this film. There was no question. It was just a very interesting movie music wise because usually you, you know you you do a you pick your cues of where you know the filmmaker wants music and where he doesn't and, yeah you know in this one usually it's like okay and then this scene's ending so there's a natural point that the music you know, it fades to black and then we come in on a new music cue the next day or whatever it is and this one's just like where do we where do we start and stop cues that it feels organic when when the take never breaks so kudos to Adrian for figuring yes. out a way to like work yeah. the score. Because, you know, and I do, you know, it's part of my fear in, in directing this movie and the one take thing is like, man, we, we run a real chance of like boring an audience with this film because we don't have the ability to edit. The editing is such, sometimes I think an, uh, an underappreciated art form in the, in the filmmaking yeah. process where- Oh, absolutely. You know, taking, out, taking out an um yeah. of an actor or stretching with a, with a reaction shot of the other actor, like, like adding a dramatic pause before they say the second half of a paragraph um you know it can it can change so much and i said man we don't we don't get that at all so there's a real risk of like and you know in real time if, if the character beth has to walk from this room of the building she's in you know she's a night janitor in the movie that's her character right. she has to walk from here point a to point b that might be two and a half minutes of screen time and is that is that really that interesting but that's where the split screen came in where we thought oh we can we can bounce back and forth a little bit but then i think by by that end point with Adrian's music and everything driving it through, just really, I remember watching it for the first time with the score and I, I got choked up watching. I've never been choked up watching yeah. anything of my, of my own, uh, own making before. And that's, uh, that, that did it. I love his music so much. Adrian, yeah, we love was, you. <laughs> yeah, his score was great. And his, his, he recorded it live, right? He did. Yes. In yeah, in a single yeah. take. <laughs> it started, wow. uh, it that started is, like, you That know, is awesome. You know, I that's, usually... that's what happens when you're friends with Gavin. <laughs> yeah. Inadvertently get roped into doing crazy <laughs> stuff. Single. I usually I usually 
involve Adrian pretty early in the process. Like, hey, we're <laughs> going to make this movie. Like, just heads up, That's... you know, if you want to get your brain thinking now. So we'll have some early organic conversations about it. But I do remember having a call where he's just kind of like, man, I guess, like, joking. I guess I'll have to do the music score live in a single take just to keep up with, with the technical feat That's... that you guys are doing. And we just kind of laughed it off. But on our, uh, it was the day we wrapped the film. So it was the morning we wrapped the film. I did a, a we shot this in my hometown of Windsor, Ontario. No, Canada. no, it was our last day of rehearsals. <laughs> last day of rehearsal that I did? The, okay. Yeah, because then you started sending him the oh, it was takes all, at the end of the night yeah. so he could start <laughs> piecing together themes and everything. So he, he was, uh, I'm sure he was muttering, just cursing your name under his breath. Well, I did this local, <laughs> this local news report uh, in my home city where we're shooting the movie. That's and, cool. They asked me, hey, any, anything else you want to tell us that we might have missed? And I just said, yes, the score will also be done live in a single take. And they, and they actually aired that. So Adrian learned that that's how he was going to do the music when I sent him a link. I said, hey, man, we got some, we got some press. Check this link out. And he, you know, he tells us, he's like, yeah, cool. He's watching it. Like, oh, that's cool. They're, they're getting the coverage. And, like, and the score will be done live in a single take. He's like, and as, as, he, <laughs> as, as he likes to quote the uh, the Bill O'Reilly clip, that F it, we'll do it live, right? do it live. Yeah, he sent me that meme back, and and that wow. tr that triggered the idea of like, okay, there's there's the gauntlet laid down. So, you know, like you know, here we go. Let's uh, let's figure out how to make this happen. And uh, and his, and his philosophy there was, you know, the 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 movie technically is full of flaws because there might be a little bit of a focus bus here or a shaky camera where we didn't want it. Part of a single take project is it's going to be a little more organic and fluid and it right. just meant that the score had that um luxury of imperfection as well and there, there are things where you can if you're really listening you can hear like the page turn of sheet music as one of the musicians is changing their changing wow. their music on the fly and or a chair squeak as they as they as they lean to, to play the cello or, you know, so <laughs> or the, all, the yeah. truck backing up to deliver things <laughs> to the there there is a, which, which they didn't time that properly but yeah when yeah. one of <laughs> There's there's just a hint of the. It's right? in there. It's in there somewhere because it was bleeding through the walls of the auditorium that we were recording in. Um, but I just I I you know if you talk to Adrian about it, it's a different thing of like oh there's so many things I would have done different if I was editing this and like multi tracking like the way that we normally would. I'm just like yeah, but it doesn't. That's the whole point. Like we all would change things and go back and mm -hmm. do it, but as a whole, it adds a different experience that we're not used to. So. Right. Well, it's, in, yeah, it's all, it all works so well together. Like you couldn't, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So, um, yeah, that's great. Um, so speaking of, uh, you're, you're from uh, Windsor, 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 Ontario. Yeah, Windsor, yeah. Ontario. Um, and I've been looking on uh, Twitter and you're teaming up with the Canadian Health Association. Yes. For yeah, the so release of the film. Canadian uh, Mental Health Association, uh, the local chapter in Windsor, Ontario. We, we had our hometown premiere about a year ago this time, a couple days from now, a year ago. And mm -hmm. we, we raised, we had a 1200 seat premiere and it's actually the same auditorium wow. we recorded the score in. Uh, and we did it in partnership with Canadian Mental Health and, and we were able to raise some money and, and give some of the, uh, the ticket That's sales great. and the corporate sponsorship towards Canadian Mental Health. And, and now that we have this release coming out, our Canadian theatrical, we're, we're in, um, in select cities, but all of the ticket money uh, in Canada is going to 100% going to the Canadian Mental Health Association for our, nice. our theatrical run of one week. Uh, again, we just thought, um, you know, and honestly, there's, there's no secret in saying this, but, you know, in right. filmmaking, you're often doing your theatrical releases in indie film to, to generate some press and, and some buzz outside of uh, a regular VOD release. And we just thought if we're, this isn't, you know, it's not a money making venture per se to do theatrical all the time up front. So we just thought if we could do some good and, and lend some help and, and really Windsor in particular, so many people and organizations made the film possible in the first place. So we can do anything right. to give back a little bit. And, you know, it's, it's, I won't say rare, but I think, I think it's less often that you have a movie that, that has been so well received in terms of the subject mess, yeah. the matter. And, and the fact that David and I were able uh, to get the film vetted by the Canadian mental health association and some, some uh, mental health professionals, to say no, this this film could be a conversation starter. This could be a, a good, um, good, you know, like yes. social awareness piece. So we just we just feel inclined now to to do any sort of community involvement or screenings when uh, whenever it presents itself. It's great to hear. That's some really good work. Yeah, we really appreciate that. That's awesome. 
Uh, I got a question um, for David. Yeah. Uh, so David, yes. it, it's a super. It's a <laughs> this dark is movie. my actual beard. Yes. <laughs> oh, nah, that was my Love question. It. Never mind. I'll pat yes. up. No, I, that's, uh, that's everyone's question, and it's real. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this movie is it's extremely dark, of course, because the subject matter and what you're dealing with. Um, how was it playing this character, and how did you get into that headspace to play this character? Uh, you know, I, this, it was a, it was a very, I mean, part of the challenge was I do, a, I do a lot of comedy. That's, that's like my, my mainstay. And, but I think like every comedian wonders, like, am, am I a good actor? Am I just funny? And, uh, so this was, I, you know, I felt for me like this was, this would be a challenge for me as an actor to see like, can I, can I get to this? level but when so when I started preparing and uh, speaking with a lot of people who had um, who had lost people um, who had attempted and uh, thankfully failed um, you know I started to kind of get into the background of like the mindset and I you know I've, I've battled anxiety and depression uh, yeah. since I can remember um, you know been off and on a you know, different antidepressants and, and medications. Uh, and a lot of the reason, like, I would want to come off of stuff was typically because of the stigma that's involved. You know, I, I didn't want to have to be using a particular medication. Um, but I think that, that that stigma is, that's more than half the issue. Uh, and a lot of the reason that we wanted to make this film um, because I think that if, you know, if we can kind of undo the taboo of talking about your mental health yes, and destigmatize right. the fact that, you know, uh, particularly now in this time where so many people are isolated against their, you know, wishes, <laughs> um, uh, you know, I think that people that maybe had, had been able to stave off a lot of those uh, thoughts and feelings by being able to surround themselves with other people or to stay busy enough to be distracted from that are starting to recognize those things and um, and so you know, I, th I think when I was when I was starting to prepare this character though the hardest part for me was getting to the point where I could understand why somebody would go so far as to take their own life um, cause it's not something that I had specifically dealt with on my own, but my fear about getting into that headspace and really understanding. And, uh, you know, I think in order to take on this character properly, I would, you know, I needed to empathize with somebody who was, um, in that position and willing and ready to, to make that final decision. Um, I think my fear was that if I could understand it, that it would become an option for me. And so that was my, the biggest um, obstacle for me to overcome was realizing that I can empathize with somebody who would be willing to do that without it meaning that, that that's now on the table for me. Um, and, you know, I, yeah, it's, it, it took me, it, it took me a long time after we finished filming to really kind of shed all of the character that I had, had taken on. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to do comedies from now on because that kind of method acting is, ah, it's just too, it's too rough. I'm going to leave that to Daniel Day Lewis, who was also retiring. Right. So I feel like maybe that's just a sign, you know, <laughs> you get too deep into character. It's a, uh, you know, it can, it can be, it can be quite a burden to, to shed all those skins. Um, but I, you know, as we discussed about authenticity, you know, it felt like if I, if I was going to be the one to take on this role, um, and, and I tried to get out of it, you know, a handful of times, <laughs> like, maybe we should find an actor to do this. <laughs> and Gavin was like, David, you're an actor, remember? And I was like, like right, right. Right. I remember now. Um, but uh, yeah, it just, I felt like I needed to really understand where um, this character could be and would be coming from. 
It's good. Yeah. I mean, no, don't, don't sell yourself short. You're a great actor, <laughs> incredible actor. You and Sarah, <laughs> you and Sarah both were just um, incredible together. There's this real, um, the movie felt real. It felt like you were a fly on the wall and you were just watching the situation of play. And unfortunately, you know, we're at home. You can't help. You can't do anything. Even though it's the one thing I wanted to do. Um, but mm. you guys, you guys were incredible. And um, I know, unfortunately, Sarah couldn't be here with us today. But um, you know, I Sarah, just, uh, Sarah, Sarah would love to be here, but she is um, selling selling ham or something. Um, <laughs> yep. she, no, she's got a she's got a, a commercial gig in uh, in Toronto. For, Good. Yeah. For, yeah, something I probably Canada, already said more where than people should, still yeah. work, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Where but the industry is not completely decimated by COVID, <laughs> right? And she was. Uh, you guys were both great in it, so yeah, it was. It was an amazing film all around. So, um, thank you, Kevin. Yeah. You're welcome, David. It was awesome. Um, so, um, what um, I know you talked about this, you know, just real quickly. Um, what is your guys's main? Uh, you know, after people watch the movie, what? Do you want people to take away from it? What is your, you know, uh, yeah, what do you want people to walk out of, uh, turn off the movie and? I mean, if we're being completely honest, hire me to direct something for you. Give me more money to make movies. Like, no, honestly, there's always goals. There's goals (laughs) of independent film that you, you make these things. You, you know, we made this on a extremely low budget um, you know, pulling every favor we could and and you just, you hope that anyone's ever going to see your movie, let alone, you know, we've had a very wild ride. It's played festivals all over the, all over the world for the last year. You know, we've won awards at 25 or 26 festivals. We're getting amazing reviews on the film and, you know, you, you make anything independent with the hopes, like, like David was even explaining, you know, mostly comedic acting, like taking the big challenge of, of doing it, proving, proving to Hollywood, proving to the industry, I can do this dramatic role. I would like to to work and make more movies. So that's that's a very real and uh, an honest goal. From the actual message of the film, uh, you know, the the basic <laughs> the basic thing for me is, you know, be be kind to each other and listen to each other. I feel like most of us are too damn impatient all the time. That somebody that seems like they're being problematic in a in a restaurant lineup or something, probably if somebody would just listen to whatever their frustration is for, for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, two minutes. Like you, right. you, you might change the entire course of somebody's life by just being a little kinder, a little more patient with them. And yes. uh, you know, for me, it's been, it's even just sort of understanding what the movie can mean to different people that that whole festival run and the Q and A's that come after, after the screening and talking to audiences, we've had some incredibly emotional and stirring and sort of riveting conversations and lengthy conversations with audience members that even sometimes spill into the lobby and then into the bar afterwards. That's, that's honestly really what's taught me like what, what the message are, are taking from the film. I, I try to never tell people this is, this is what you should get out of the movie because right. pe- people are going to get whatever they get out of it. Um, but it has, it has been really eye opening. David, David was much more insightful to say that this film could become a, a conversation starter. And I, yeah. I really shied away from it until until other people w- would say it because I just I thought it's not it's not for us as the filmmaker to tell people that our film might have an important message or, or might have a, a teachable moment. Um, but it turn, turns out he's perfectly right in saying that. Yeah, but on. at yeah, the yeah. same time, like you have to have an intention, you know, when you tackle a yeah. subject like this, yeah. you know, and I think that that was that was all the, always the intention for me is that, um, you know, it, it would present essentially like a a realistic and real snapshot of one conversation and that that could inspire other people encourage other people to have another conversation and uh and gavin's right you know at at, at every festival that we've been to i mean I, I can't even count uh the number of times that people have come up um wanted to talk about their own experiences um and said that you know it made them want to go and and speak with someone we had we had one woman come up to me at, after a festival and and say that she had written a letter to her father that she decided not to send after watching our movie because she realized that it wasn't it it was it was just for her to vent that it, it mm. that it would be hurtful for him to read um and if you don't get that reference, then please watch the movie and then you will. 
Yeah. Um, but that's, yeah. that's the kind of things that, I mean, you can't have any idea that, that one aspect of the story is going to have such a drastic effect on somebody. And I don't know who this, who this lady's father is, but man, did he look out because I feel like that letter was probably not nice. <laughs> yeah. I remember when we had, when we had the, the Windsor premiere, uh, standing on stage and somebody there were there were balconies in the theater that you know the the lights on you i can't see but there there was uh a woman who stood up in the balcony that actually was a crisis worker for the for the windsor police that worked on the crisis lines uh and was was choking through tears just saying how much the movie meant to her that somebody had made a movie that understands what they face and deal with mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. and, and 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 how well and uh, you know she's crying i'm getting choked up trying to like answer her from the stage the whole and and she actually got a like a not a standing ovation but a very very long like ovation from from the audience for for speaking up and sharing i i, I wish i could remember exactly what she said because it was her phrasing right. of it was magic but it, that, that's you know those are those are incredibly special moments you, you yeah. always hope you make a film that people are going to like but seeing people have um you know a, a incredibly impacted viewing experience has has been you know really mm -hmm really wonderful and it really just put an eye on making sure moving forward that I can find other stories that, that can tell meaningful messages and you know I, I feel like that's cemented both David and I and something that we want to you know obviously we, we've got some movie scripts where on the surface that's just not going to be there because we have you know right. exciting vampire stories or whatever we want to tell but uh, I think just find yeah. finding ways to tell truth and and, and twilight from the perspective yeah. of the trees <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Might as well, right? Why not? It's a Pixar animated movie. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's called Tree Light. Yeah, yeah. It, stars, Tree Light. it stars Groot from the <laughs> Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's, it's uh, yeah. trying to bring <laughs> trying to bring so many different things together. <laughs> it's it's open and it's opening on as many screens as Wonder Woman is, which is uh, you know Zero? an honest statement That's... right now. Not, not, you know. <laughs> Oh, dang COVID. Man. Yeah. Do, you guys, do you guys miss movies, movie theaters? Yes. I, oh, I tremendously. Got to, I got to see Tenet on the weekend because I was out, out of town and they had open movie theaters. And I was like, I looked, you know, you, you buy your seats online, you can see the theater map. Mm -hmm. and it was like, yeah. there's only four other people in this theater. I'm like in an 800 seat IMAX theater. I'm like, I feel safer in there than going to the grocery store. So I went and saw, and, and I looked at my AMC app, and the, it was exactly six months since the last time I saw a movie when all of this started. Oh, I was like, it's been six months since sitting in It's the insane. That's me, what Kevin. It's just weird that all bit. four of you yeah. sat in the same row, though. I don't uh, know. Really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is weird. There's everything shut down. And like, I mean, I haven't been in a theater since I think Invisible Man was my last that, movie. That was my then, last one six was months it? ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, mine. And then, uh, Recently, uh, Bill and Ted at the drive-in, but that was like the last. I did. I did do yeah, a anything. retro drive-in here. I saw the goons. Yeah, this would be awesome. nice. That would have been fun. Mm. Yeah, Tenet's on my list though. Tenet yeah. must have been great in a theater. I mean, it must have been amazing in the, in the theater. It was, nice be the a, it was nice to be in a theater. We'll just say that. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well. I do want to thank both of you uh, for joining yes. us today, and, I, and especially during you know Suicide Awareness Month. This is such an important message, um, so I urge everybody to check this out. Last call. Uh, how can people watch the movie? Where can they go to watch it? It's a good question. Uh, it's opening, <laughs> and we've got great answers. <laughs> yeah. It's opening Friday. Uh, you know, I have to do the air quotes of theatrical uh, in in the United States and Canada. In uh, the U.S., that that means. Uh, primarily uh, virtual cinemas through Alamo, Alamo Draft House's uh, virtual program, their on-demand program. Uh, and then it is going to expand into some actual um, boutique theaters that are open in parts of the country the following oh, okay. week. And then the, the, bigger, the bigger place that everyone's going to be able to find it is in the end of October, October 27th, that hits VOD. So wherever you rent movies and stream movies now, well, from Alamo, or Alamo, uh, Amazon downloads to uh, iTunes, the Google Play Store, Xbox Store, any of those kind of things, you'll, you'll be able to find the movie. Voodoo. Voodoo, Voodoo yes. That's yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's one of them. Walmart. I, I like the way you said it, too. Yeah, yeah. not anymore. <laughs> Walmart doesn't have <laughs> Voodoo anymore? No, Walmart sold Voodoo. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I blinked, I blinked four times during this podcast and another streaming site sold or changed. Didn't, didn't, uh, <laughs> right. didn't uh, CBS All Access just become Paramount Plus? Paramount Plus. Yes, well? I saw that today. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Everything's a plus now. Everything plus, 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 Disney plus. Yeah, we're called, uh, well. yeah. we're, last, we're launching last call Indie plus. Minus. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys want to. <laughs> or the divided symbol. Subscribe to our. Uh... <laughs> I do. I do. If you guys happen to know any private billionaires that want to fund a tech company, I do want to start Cancel Flicks, which is where for three ninety nine you can watch everything that's been canceled by cancel culture um, exclusively. I'm... But my business, my business model is that within three years, we'll own 80% of the world's content. So we'll be the largest streaming platform just by, by nature of cancel culture. So love it. You, you I, I guess we have, call, there. we have to call it cancel flicks plus though now, right? Just to stay competitive. <laughs> right. yes. Yeah, the plus yeah. has to be in there. <laughs> well, no, you have to have the different tiers. You have to have like the entry, like $5 yeah. tier and then the, the $30 the, the tier plus, that gets you yeah. Mulan, you know? Yeah, the, yeah, plus, right. yeah. the, plus, the plus section. The no remember. ads version. The plus, exactly. The plus section is the movies that studios were too scared to release because of being canceled. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, look at they that. Fi- they Genius. finally have an outlet. Yeah. <laughs> That's a plus. Well, very cool. Yeah, it is a plus. It's a huge plus. <laughs> also, it's also known as the Mel Gibson collection. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, man. Gotta oh, love Mel. Yeah. Oh, Made some great, great movies. Jim, he did. Jim Caviezel. He really did. If you're watching. <laughs> Who yeah, I knew you were Jesus before you did. <laughs> yeah. My divine intervention <laughs> in the cinematic world. Oh man, yeah. that's a great. That's the line <laughs> of the whole interview. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, he knew you were Jesus before you did. <laughs> it's a rare, oh, it's wow. a rare, rare power. It's only worked once. Yeah, <laughs> it's still a power. That's all it takes. That's all it, it takes. What is all Jesus? It's... That's all it takes. Yeah, <laughs> right. Just one. <laughs> Oh, well, oh, very cool. Well, well, yes. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, well, no, thank you guys so much for coming on. We really, really appreciate it. Um, I just want to say one thing before we leave. I did mm-hmm. watch the uh, Everything All at Once video. Oh, cool. Yeah. With Simo, oh. And it's it's like five minutes just of just, uh, it's amazing. It's wonderful. Well, it looks you. great. The music, the, this honestly, I watched it like two days ago, and that's, he's all I've been listening to on my iTunes Simmel, Since I heard him. Simmel is an amazing musician and, and, and yeah. you actually pronounced it correctly because people go like smile, so why no, Simmel. Uh, yeah. Simmel. It's a uh, Simmel. He's is, also a legitimately great human being, like in, uh, in real life. Listening to his is, lyrics, you so can refreshing. feel that too. He, Simmel uh, is, is one man, Brian. Uh, he it's it's spelled s y m l for anybody you know listening or watching yeah. that wants to know but I've, I've had the opportunity to make uh several music videos for him at this point and and what where we really thrive is doing these like short forms the for, short film style music videos so he's you know the artist doesn't appear in the video and, and i right. need to make and if you if you've caught on by now it, the symbol song hurt for me is in the trailer for last call and yeah, in the I, film and in, in the film itself so I, I'm with you that I, his music is beautiful. I, I'm a collaborator and friend, but that he has also yeah. become one of my favorite artists. David, you, there's a similar story that relates to your prep for the movie as well. What? No, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not going to tell sure. it. He, he, he had a similar song on his playlist that he would listen to over and over and prepping like right before we would roll a take for Last Call. Yeah. Well, that that was that was that was for me. It took, I, although I will say, it's, it's made it difficult to listen to that particular song. Yeah, uh, that's good. I, yeah, I have a, I have a hard uh, time with. It's, it's actually it's the song that that started Gavin's career with Simmel making videos for him. Oh, nice. Uh, so it's. Uh, wait, what was that? <laughs> We, I don't a, think we're talking I, about the same yeah, song. So no, nor do I. That? Never mind. Scratch that <laughs> whole last minute. So. <laughs> <laughs> we're all Simmel fans. Everyone should be a Simmel fan. Find him where yes. you listen to music, and you know his his support for a movie has been wonderful. And uh, Simmel twenty twenty four. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Perfect. I'll vote. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. All right. Well. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, and of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, we want to invite you to visit pastrominationcom for news, reviews, podcasts, giveaways, and more. Uh, again, thank you guys so much for being on here. We yes. really enjoyed talking about Last Call, and we highly encourage everybody to go check that out.
Pleasure to be oh, here. Thanks so much. So Thank much you guys so much. I appreciate uh, uh, you know having the site review the movie. All all reviews have been part of the journey to getting to you know getting this film released and finding distribution. So it it, it means uh, you know all the indie reviews and movie websites and blogs and podcasts of the world are are the core of what helps us get the message to people that our film even exists and and get us to where we are. So much appreciation awesome. for for what you do and how your enthusiasm you. for movies can uh can be shared with others and, and help indie films like ours get into the world for sure well, thank, well, thank you, you guys so much really appreciate really it pre yep all right have a good night thanks, thanks.